And you're looking at live pictures right now in Baltimore. By all accounts, today peaceful protests that are going on. Um, uh, this uh, stark contrast to earlier in the week. The city obviously is trying to return to some form of normalcy. Uh, protests last night uh, didn't see nearly the level of violence or looting that we saw on Monday night. Ten people were arrested uh, yesterday evening, but more than 200 arrested on Monday in the scenes. Um, uh, more than searing for most folks, especially those that were in Baltimore. In fact, 15 police officers were injured on Monday evening alone. Now, Mayor Stephanie Rongs Blake, she's defending her handling of the crisis, saying she's comfortable with the way that the city responded during the very challenging times, particularly Monday evening. Mayor appeared to give the protesters wide latitude when she said this on Saturday. I uh, worked with the police and instructed them to do everything that they could to make sure that the protesters were able to exercise their uh, right to free speech. Uh, it's a very delicate balancing act because while we uh, try to make sure that they were protected from the cars and the other you know, things that were going on, um, we also gave those who wished to destroy space to do that as well. Okay, so clearly we all know it's illegal to attack officers, to start fires, to loot. But the question is, is it tough to prosecute protesters who go too far? And what if officials, like the mayor said, it's okay to protest and even give them wide breath here if they're destroying? You know, Mayor, we've seen this, unfortunately, this scene play out, and we've talked on the show many times um, about where we are in America right now, and there's definitely uh, different opinions on justice. But when it comes to protest. I've spoken to a lot of officials, even when the cameras are on, and they say, you have to let some of this burn out. You have to give not only a place to go, but there's no time for permits or no point of clarity where people are going and where they're not. I, it's not easy. But when a mayor says, you know, you got to give them room in effect here to destroy things, and then things happen, is it harder to prosecute after the fact when the city, in effect, gave its blessing for the protest to happen? Maybe not the burnings, maybe not the attacks and the, the looting, but in a way they gave a, a blessing to a, a platform for this to occur. Well, it's one thing to say that you're going to curtail people's First Amendment rights. People have a right to assembly, a right to voice their opinion, uh, and they have a right to protest publicly, to march. Uh, it, it's a separate issue to suggest that the police should allow people to destroy property. And that's been my position in every case, whether it's Ferguson. And in some respects, even sometimes the police almost are punishing in smaller cities the people themselves by letting them destroy things that are going to be essential to their life. Your supermarket's now gone. You're not going to have another one. Especially but these underinsured folks here where do they go to the day after absolutely but in this case it's one thing to have restraint and say okay fine the curfew is 10 o'clock it's 10 30 but you're still peaceful we're going to let you stay here that that's that's reasonable and that makes sense when it comes to arresting people who are burning cars damaging property injuring people you should charge those people if you can't catch them right now you have them on video you should charge them they've got to be accountable but there's got to be accountability also for law enforcement and if there was more accountability for law enforcement we wouldn't be having these situations but when it comes to you got to let people, obviously, Doug, um, this country is based on protest, okay? Mm -hmm. So when you want um, the public to communicate, but then it goes too far, from a practical level, when you even hear the mayor saying, you got to give them some room here, how practical is it if there was a case, if you're defending the person who was protesting, say, it's different than if in a normal Wednesday, they just decided on Main Street uh, to take a you know, back to a cop car, then in the middle of all that's going on here, uh, this mob mentality or being caught up in the action, it, is there a difference with the distinction or not? I think there is a difference. Listen, I don't think anybody will rationally say that you're allowed to go around destroying things and committing crimes. But, you know, you got to look at also, we had to Occupy Wall Street where people tried to take a piece of land and they tried to peacefully um, protest. And what did they get? They got uh, surrounded by police, they got harassed until finally the whole thing was broken up and they were deconstructed. So people and, and the city and law enforcement can't have it both ways. If you want people to protest in, a, in an area and do it rationally and do it respectfully, then you have to respect them. Look, and if they don't, you let the people... Listen, this. nobody's blaming the police, but you can't, have you, can't a, you can't have it both ways. If you want people to protest, 
and you want them to behave themselves when they're sitting peacefully doing it you got to leave right, them alone and New let York. them do it this is baltimore now i Different think the police i happen to agree with you that in this circumstance both the mayor and the police are in a catch-22 situation because if they intervene at the time it's throwing gas on the fire it could touch off more violence and also violence against the police. So I think what she was saying, to give them breathing space, to use a First Amendment analogy, I get what she was saying, but it just sounded horrible yeah. when it came out of her mouth. Uh, but you know, I think there's a point here that there are people who go to peacefully protest, and you have to protect them too. Sure, sure, sure. And so when people are committing crimes and lighting fires and taking aggressive action that might uh, end up with retaliation from police officers in a not so nice way, you do have to prosecute those people because in some way you are impinging on people's right to peacefully protest when you don't adequately deal with the people who aren't. Yeah, but you if the mayor is tacitly green lighting it, that's a tough case I don't to think prosecute. She's doing that. No, I, I don't think, think the mayor, she is either, but it's certainly ambiguous. I think what the mayor said is, hey, look, what is the reality of this situation that we can't right at this moment take aggressive action against these people because most likely she knew they're going to hurt more than it's going to help from a political standpoint and also they are going know. to start. Mayor, if I was one of the, if it was my guy who got rounded up and the mayor had said the night yeah. before, yeah. the mayor said that I got room to destroy, yeah. right? Selective you enforcement. Don't, you don't, you don't claims. Say that. What that. the mayor should have said was, the mayor should have said, "Look, we're going to we're going to have some flexibility. We're going to allow you to peacefully protest. If you do anything other than that, we're going to prosecute you." That should have been the initial statement, I agree so that, that that way people understood from the beginning that right. we're going to tolerate reasonable difference, reasonable expression of, of, of your uh, expectations and your thoughts. But once you start committing crimes, we're going to get you. And if we don't get you today, we'll get you later. But it has to go both ways, because going back to Doug's uh, comment about Occupy Wall Street, it's, it's, it's burned into my mind the four white women who were behind a police barricade. They didn't set the barricades up themselves, who got pepper sprayed by four yeah. or five law enforcement officers. These were, these were leaders, management, lieutenants and captains. And then the guy who was filming it had the phone taken and had his face smashed into the car. And uh, Cyrus Vance said he couldn't prosecute them. There was no evidence, even though it was on the news. And they didn't lose any, they lost vacation pay from Ray Kelly. You know, I, just on a non-legal note here, uh, these stories are happening too often. And uh, this unrest for anybody in a major city and even in smaller cities not to uh, kind of almost forecast, God forbid this happens in my town, I, I think is uh, um, dereliction of duty well, here. Can you if imagine not if it would have spread to, say, Wilmington or Philadelphia? I, I, we were on the show discussing this a few weeks ago, and I said this is not 1968 Chicago. Mm -hmm. Who among us here ever thought we would see imagery like nope. this on an American Me television either. again it's, in it's, it's 2015? Funny where the 60s and early 70s were, you can argue it's a different time in a different way, but there's a lot more than just police misconduct, but that for another show. This is a, a major American uh, conversation we need to have. All right, when we come back, though, after the death of Freddie Gray while in police custody, which, which set off the Baltimore incident and all the unrest that followed, there is another big push for police to wear body cameras, but that actually could cause as many questions um, as some of the problems it solves. I'm going to explain here about a brand new dilemma that's come up with all this video.